one and all to the KOE Nation for another premium Highland Scotch review from the Dalmore Distillery. I am your King of Extreme, Phil KOE, here with my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only, the Blend Master, Tony G. Like, share, subscribe. This is one that kind of came out of left field. Yeah, when Tony and I were hunting for the Dalmore travel exclusives. Trudging through the front line oh, of yeah. the interwebs. Yes, these are the sacrifices we make for you <laughs> folks. We happen upon this little beauty, yes. Uh, the Dalmore Vintage 2008 10-year-old. So this is a 10-year Dalmore. And it's got an interesting age statement. And also, what I think is interesting is I don't think this has any coloring in it. So. No, this is very different than the standard dark caramel looking. Just for comparison's sake, let's, yeah, actually, over there. let's yeah. do some comparison because. I mean, you got this gorgeous mug on camera. What else do you need? Compared to your standard coloration, it is significantly lighter. Yes, yes. Uh, there is a specific uh, distiller's caramel that they add to the Dalmore that uh, it's always the same caramel every time so that there's a consistency in the product. So I can at least appreciate that. And it seems to be one that uh, Master Distiller Richard Patterson knows what he's doing because some people, if they do it wrong, it can add bitterness. But his is nothing but sweet chocolate marzipan and all that good stuff. So, Tony, while I open this up and pour us out a dram, why don't you tell the people a little bit of the uniqueness of this particular bottle? Uh, so, on the back of the bottle, we've got, uh, it does mention the Royal Heritage. This is the standard uh, summarization of the story of the Dalmore. But uh, I did want to touch on the second portion, our renowned house style. At the Dalmore, we have a tradition of pioneering new standards when maturing our whiskey. We benefit from a 175-year-old artesian process that has been refined over two centuries to enhance the style and flavor of our whiskeys. Our unique, large, bulbous stills produce a full-flavored and highly complex spirit, which is then enriched over time in the finest casks, many available only to the Dalmore, and hand-selected by our master distiller, Richard Pabst. Uh, like this one is so intriguing because this one was ex this is one that you've been expecting to be a release eventually with a 10 year age statement now this is a vintage 2008 year but it is a 10 year age statement mostly done in bourbon casks we assume yes uh, I just want to get to did you get to this no one? not yet uh, I'll, I'll go ahead this whiskey was initially matured in the Finest first fill American white oak ex bourbon barrels, which that does show oh, a bit in those. Yeah, super. First fill, providing the perfect canvas for which to create the special single malt. The precious spirit was then placed into Madeira casks for its final years of finishing. Uh, this extended period in Madeira casks has gifted this whiskey with an additional layer of complex perfection. So strangely enough, mm. wow. I have a bottle of Madeira. That is right sweet, there. Sweet, sweet oak. A little bit of vanilla. It really reminds, I, I hate to compare other um, products, but because this is mostly bourbon, not a lot of sherry, there's no sherry influence, and just a little bit of Madeira, like, this does remind me of other Highlands. Like, this okay. this does have that Highlands, like, it almost, like, I hate to say it, but I'm going to go ahead and compare. It almost reminds me of an Oban 14. Okay? You know, I'm going to agree 100% because... It's, it's a little bit more light and a little yes. bit more rounded. I'm like, I, I know I've, this is an aroma I'm familiar with, but I can't put my finger on I think you hit it, Oban yeah, it, it really does hit me like an wow. old, which, you know, Oban was one of the first introductions that I had in scotch, at, at least high-end scotch. So, well, T, let's see how this one uh, hits the nose. Well, the palate, anyways. Sweet. Mm. There's the oak. Mm, there's a tingle. Let's say there's like, but there's an orangey, zesty, almost lemony sweetness on the front. With a really nice 
Wow, that finish. Light bourbony finish of that oak uh, yeah. and that vanilla. Yeah. And almost no spice, but vanilla bourbon. Madeira know, yeah. just ties it all together. It kind of complements the full flavor. It doesn't that. really stand out on wow. its own, but it just kind of That's wraps really the nice. whole profile together. Because, mm. all right, Tim, you've had this before, but. Mm. There's a nose of Madeira. It's oh, that, yeah. That okay. deep chocolatey yeah. brownies. Um, but like I said, all that is is just wrapping. Because it's only spent maybe a little over a year. So it just wraps that fruitiness on the front and that bourbon on the back. Yeah, I, I really like the bourbon influence on this. And usually I like my scotch to be about the scotch. But this is uh, the Dalmore is all about the, the bourbon barrel, and this okay. accentuates that to just a, a perfect example. Everything starts in a bourbon barrel when it comes to the Dalmore. I actually listened this to- is a, This is a great homage to that, you know? Yes, I actually listened to an interview with Richard Patterson talking about, because they asked, uh, will the Dalmore ever release like a white dog? Wow. Buffalo Trace and other distilleries are doing that to a lot of commercial success. Richard said that they did not have plans to do so, but if you were to ever taste the white dog, that's what we call it here in the, the, the United States, it would have kind of a lemongrass uh, taste to it, and the sherry and the bourbon kind of builds around, and, yeah. and so that's where it went from, the bourbon took it from lemongrass to light lemons, Yeah, and I, like I... really made it... Uh, I think this is as close as you're going to get to that kind of uh, offering, because... This is delightful. Like, like I said, this just takes all the bourbon influence and it, it puts it up on a pedestal. And all the other, uh, the flavors and the noses, just kind of surround it and just hoist that bourbon up and say, hey, this is this is very nice. This is approachable. Is this 40? I believe so. Um, let's see. Uh, 46%. Ooh. And it does not no. drink like it at all. I, it's a smooth wow. drinker. I, I would have... Never guessed that high. Okay. Yeah. Wow. No. Not at all. My goodness. This, this is. This I was about to say this is one of the. This is one of the for. few distilleries that does bourbon influence right, because there's a. I hate to say this. A lot of Scotch distilleries, they just take some who knows who, bourbon barrels, yeah. throws their whiskey in it, and says bourbon aged, and you're like, and you're smelling it, you're like. No. Really? From where? Yeah. What, what bourbon is this? Like, is it one of those uh, s no smell distillery? What is this? Probably. What did you get? What did you get? All your cast from Heaven Hill? What? There's no smell here. Like, what? Come on. Yeah, I throw shade. You, you heard it. You know what you did, Heaven Hill. You know what you. You did. know what you did. So probably some of that Tennessee bourbon. <sighs> This is not the time or place, Tony. We've got amazing, amazing no, Dalmore this is, scotch. This is beautiful. We will get into our bourbon Tennessee wars later. I just have one question. Why does it say vintage 2008, age 10 years, and why isn't the 10-year part of the principal line already? Well, vintage is something that they normally put out in uh, vineyards uh, when they're putting out a very special batch that will be the vintage. Like, mm -hmm. when they know that this was from the best trees, the best grapes that had the best weather, the best terroir, they uh, fermented the best, they made the best wine, and we're going to bottle these off to the side as a vintage, and that's what they did here. I'm going to ask again, why is this not already a part of the principal line? Because there's only so much really, really good no. in the world. You need to do this. this. This needs to be a part of it. Ten year, right here. You're gonna do it. Do it. I'm, this is this is the You know, one. I've often thought that when this Richard Patterson myth. decides to retire, he's just done doing it. The Dalmore Distillery is probably gonna start releasing like 10, 12, 15 year old just bourbon cask age because they're not gonna be able to match what he can do with blending and so I'm available. But they're gonna have all of this stock that he made. So I think they're gonna start selling a lot less blends of the stuff Richard made for about the next 20 years, which is why I'm trying to get my hands on all this now while the nose is still well and active. But yeah, that this is, I would love to see this 
as part of their principal line, but I mean, Tony, there's really not a lot of Madeira casts to go around, uh, you know, make the amount that you really want. So that's the other uh, downside. Mm. You got a point there. Because uh, let's be frank, Tony, until I showed you this bottle, how many Madeira bottles have you seen in this life? So many. I, I have so many on my ship now. I've none. Exactly. Uh, that's kind of the point. So Madeira is an excellent fortified wine, but I imagine the casking is very hard to come by. Okay. So that I. So now, Tony, we move on to a very hard part: the grading. Okay. Ah, uh, this is gonna be difficult. So we're gonna grade this on three five-star scales: a shelving question, and then the secret fifth question. So, Tony, as a single. Malt scotch on a five star scale. What would you give this? 3.75. Get out of my head. I was thinking 3.75 myself yeah. just because it's an excellent single oh, malt yeah. scotch. It represents single malt. But it's just, it's got a bit of youth to the point where it actually rounds out what would be harsh edges with yeah. if this would have stayed in a cast for longer this would have gotten a lot harsher at oh 46 yeah. especially so yeah i'm going 375 because it's excellent scotch but we've had better scotches tonight look at that there you go <laughs> from the same distillery exactly um <laughs> as a scotch introducing someone to scotch or just comparing it to the entire world of scotch 4.25 I'm going to be a little less generous than you and give it four stars as a scotch. Okay. Excellent stuff. And yes, you could introduce just about anybody to this. And also, if you have a bourbon drinker in your life who hasn't tried scotch or says they hate scotch, this one. This might bring them back to the island of Scotland, the nation of Scotland, the UK. Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of an island, but it's also attached to England, and so it's all one big island, so... I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, so... Oh, That's not my place. Yeah, I'm enjoying the whiskey. Don't take this from me. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, Lord. And, this yeah, is I, right. I, I'm, I'm sure the folks at the Dome are like, you could call us at our own planet if you'll keep buying the bottles, son. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, boy... Now, as a whiskey. Four and a half. Woo! Uh, the fact that this says vintage, you shouldn't do a lot with this other than enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can, if you can get your hands on it. But, I think as a whiskey, this is one of the more diverse offerings from the Dalmore. You could do a lot with this, and this is crafted well enough in its youth from the Dalmore that it's impressive in it's only 10 years. I, I think this is a home run for this specific offering. Yeah, I was expecting this to be a lot more harsh. Yeah, I was too, 100%. Um, hmm. it's, it's very clean. And As a whiskey, I'm going to stick with four. Uh, I, it, it's excellent, but like you said, I... Yes, you could cocktail it. Yes, it'd make an amazing yep. scotch and soda. Yes, it would make an amazing whiskey fix. Yes, it would make a marvelous Manhattan. Okay, what am I saying? Yes, you could cocktail with yeah, this whiskey. It would be amazing. You could it'd be this. incredible. Ah, oh, why? Well, I, I, I couldn't you bring shouldn't. This you shouldn't. But I would probably pour this over uh, a nice thick ribeye steak. I, yeah. Th oh God, I think the sweetness just. I, I, this is really unique. I don't know if I would uh, as much go with this just with ice. I think the I ice don't might think I would. mellow Drop in the a little wrong water. Way. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I don't know that, honestly, I think this would be better. Like, it's still a little bit cool to the palate from, you know, transportation. I think once this does. There's a bit of honey there. So there's exactly. a part of this that it reminded me of Oban and also. Also reminded me of space side. So, T, give us the. Uh, the notes. aroma is ginger spice, creamy caramel, apples, and orange segments. I didn't get a lot of the fruit, but the ginger spice and the caramel, I can understand. I was getting some fruit there. Uh, the palate: walnut, peaches, vanilla for sure, and soft, chewy licorice. Okay, mm. I get that on maybe the end, but the finish says 
crushed almonds, and old English marmalade. I have that, okay. Marmalade. That's perfect. I get wow, that. God. I mean, Tony, you remember when you and I were growing up, going to boarding school, and we would get that old English marmalade, right, uh, from the, the headmaster at the uh, at university? You remember? Boarding school university where we would get all that English marmalade? Sure don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we're not quite sure what English marmalade is, but... <laughs> It does have that marmalade. I'm sorry, I could not resist. Uh, <laughs> I have tasted marmalade. I know what it tastes like, damn it. But have you had English marmalade? Been too long, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Its so, origins, I'm, I cannot confirm. So, folks, uh, my word. Shelving. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going on the top yeah. next to all my other dolls. Uh, yeah, this is amazing. I, um, yeah, very, very impressed. Blew yeah, me away. Goodness gracious. Um, now, Tony, do you remember what this cost USD? This one was actually the cheapest of the ones I think that we've found so far. Uh, I, I want to say under, right around 70, maybe? Okay, 70? Right, under 70? Oh, nice. If that was under 70, then yeah, this is definitely a good buy. Oh, one yeah. Of, one I, of the better values 100%. on the Dalmore line, especially considering it's been I'm here. snatching this up if I see it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm... I will definitely replace this bottle when yeah. it goes empty. But because I've got a few bottles of Dalmar, it might take me a minute to do it. Yeah. So, oh, anything else you'd like to say, T? No, it's, I, I want to see a 10-year age team. I understand the Madeira thing, but you could almost... Take, could, take your recipe here. Try it with pork. <laughs> I was about to say, you could just do this without adding any of the wine casking. And it would still be a marvelous release. But the wine casking is what really ties Dalmore together. So, yeah. What, what this is say? a this is a full blast of bourbon aged Scotch, rounded with wine, and it's just it's a marvelous blend. Richard Patterson, you've done it again. Uh, Flavor blending. The nose, the mad scientist. Uh, so, folks, as I'm known to say around here. All that being said, this has been our review of the Dalmore 10 year age vintage of 2008. I am the elated, excited, uh, master Dalmore collector of the Great Plains himself, Phil KOE, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only, the very surprised. And very gracious. Tony G, like, share, subscribe. Thanks. Again.